Hi guys and welcome to Alistair Davis Golf. Today I'm joined by Tom King um, and we're going to be discussing performance practice and looking at Tom's expertise in the kind of psychology world if you like and how he can improve people's performance from using process and skills and mindset really to increase performance and practice really with a major purpose. So, talk us through what we're going to start with. Well, what I wanted to start with, Alistair, is there's so many amateurs that are guilty of just rocking up to the driving range, buying 150 balls and aimlessly hitting balls without thinking of any consequence or any purpose to their practice. Yeah. So, I want to try and bridge the gap between practicing on the driving range and practicing on the golf course, really. If you think about playing on the golf course, there's always a consequence to every kind of golf shot that you hit. So, what's the point in going to the driving range, hitting 100 balls with no consequence? Well, it doesn't really serve any purpose from my point of view as a no. golf coach, unless you're working on kind of some drills or skill acquisition, as in building a skill. That's the only time it has a purpose, but yeah. even then it's such a small part because you don't play that way. Yeah. And also, when you are training that way, for me, we have to try and use some kind of way of transforming that to the golf course also. Totally. Whether that's doing more variety in clubs or more variety in targets, yeah while we're still trying to learn a drill or a skill or a movement or a concept. Totally. So I think we get a little bit hung up in, if we're working on drills, we'll hit 50 balls doing that same drill to one specific target. Yeah. Because we never do that on the golf course. Never, so. No. And from, from my research on it, no one golf swing is ever the same. No. It varies ever so slightly, even with the most skilled players. I think the difference is the more the skilled player, the less change in the, the swing compared to a less skilled player. Totally. So the kind of reps help build a smaller gap between the difference. But again, the more we do it in a kind of block practice mode, as we would call it, the more it helps us or doesn't help us take that to the golf course. Okay, great. Look forward to it. Okay, Tom, so what we're going to do to try and show the guys at home how they can practice better, uh, the only restriction is this is we're going to use Trapman for this test. Now, okay. you can do the same test with pen and paper and you can go out and step out and measure how far you are. The scoring system, you'll have to create yourself as well, because the beauty about Trapman is they have an automated scoring system. So what we're going to do is what's called a random skills test. And we're going to base it on short game, because I think that's the best way to measure this for what we're going to do at the moment. We're going to do 40 to 65 yards in a random order. So Trapman spats out a different yardage every single shot. So it might go 48, 52, and it's where the ball lands. Okay. So we're going to actually put you through the test. Okay. And you're going to show the guys you're going through your kind of process. So you're going to treat each shot as it's... Full routine, full process, yeah. Yeah, each shot as if it's unique. Yeah. And it is unique because it's different yeah. distances. And it's also live. So it's treating the ball as it is, the conditions it is. So allowing for the wind, allowing for the temperature, allowing for all the environmental conditions that you'd face in the course. So it's probably the nearest we can get to being on the course without being on the course. Yeah. Obviously, we could do the same test on the short game area to different flags, different lies. That would be another way of doing it, but we wouldn't have a score then, the measurement. Yeah. So I think it's quite clear that we want a measurement for this, don't totally, we? Yeah, yeah. Because if you, if you think about playing golf on the golf course, every shot is measurable because yeah. it's worth a shot, isn't it? Yeah. So if you did it on your own on the short game area, we would do the similar kind of test, but you might just do it as a up and down challenge or whatever, wouldn't you? So there's lots of different things you could do. Yeah. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay. So what you'll see in, in the video is kind of Tom's uh, result of his skills test we went through and obviously the process he went through. So just talk a bit about that from, from your point of view, obviously what you want to, what, what you kind of tried to get out of it, what you learned from it, what you'd want a player to do when they're doing it, and yeah, anything like that. So what I was trying to achieve from that is, is gaining some measurable practice like exactly on the golf course. If you were to look at the graphic that's on the screen, I've written down on one side what you generally find from normal practice, people just rocking up to the driving range and what you'd find during play. And what we're really trying to do and really trying to gain from this is measurable practice and, and bridging the gap so that it's a more representative sample of what you would see on the golf course. Okay. And um, from, from your point of view, obviously I have my thoughts on this too, which we'll talk about in a second. How often should this kind of practice be done? What percentage would you see it being done? I would say 80 to 85% of that okay. kind of practice being done. Because yeah. obviously, especially for the high handicappers, technique is important and it's something that needs to be covered. But yeah. for me, this is, is a more true sample of what you see on the golf course. Yeah, I guess... 
for me, I'd look about 80, 85% as well. I'd agree with you totally. I think if you can't make good contact on the golf ball, you might need to do a little bit more technical practice because once you can get the ball going forward, then it's all about then transferring skills from the range to the course. Unless you are better on the course than the range, then you're quite unique. Um, but I think a lot of playing on the golf course, like four or five holes, doing certain tasks and playing and measurement, trying to hit the ball to certain sides of the fairway, certain sides of the green, I think is a great way of trying to practice while you're on the course. Not necessarily going out there and hitting two or three balls from one spot, because that's just as the same as being on the practice ground. Yeah, it's all about creating variety in your targets, especially. Yeah, and I like people to have clear intentions. So each shot, you have intention what you want it to do, and yeah. then you have that process. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing you'd, you'd want to see too, yeah? Totally. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please click like down below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Got content coming every single week. Watch out for the next few videos we do with Tom. We're going to talk about a few more things. Yep. And thanks for watching.